Hey, it's Jordan. Delighted to be joined by Harold Frazier, chairman of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Uh, you are in South Dakota, and uh, there's a bit of a, a back and forth right now, uh, which is not uncommon for you with the, gov uh, the governor there and the government. Uh, governor Christy Nome is uh, basically demanding that you, um, you know, close down uh, health checkpoints uh, on your reservation uh, for COVID-19. Can you kind of talk about what exactly is she, why is she asking you to, uh, you know, basically put down the checkpoints that you're using and what are the checkpoints for? Well, according to her uh, letter uh, that she sent, uh, it's because we're uh, hindering traffic is uh, what uh, she uh, is saying, and that's why she wants us to remove this checkpoint. But, you know, they're there to uh, help us uh, protect our, our residents of this reservation. Um, we've uh, got these uh, checkpoints put up uh, with the, the main purpose of tracking uh, the virus. I mean, because... Uh, we know that that virus does not travel. It's the people infected with the virus that travels. And the only way it's ever going to come in here is through travel. So, uh, and when that, our, uh, when that does happen, we want to be able to track uh, where it come from, uh, when it got here, et cetera, so we could uh, immediately try to isolate it and uh, keep it contained so it does not uh, spread throughout our, our lands here on our reservation. And what I find interesting is if she says it's blocking traffic, is there no such thing as a detour? Can't they provide detours if, uh, you know, if, if legitimately that was obstructing traffic, which I, I doubt it is? Yeah, you know, I, I, I personally have been at uh, uh, pretty much all the checkpoints uh, numerous times. And a lot of times I go there, I just observe what's going on, et cetera. And on an average, uh, each vehicle is probably uh, there maybe a minute, uh, more or less, and they continue on their way. So I, I just find it. I know uh, she personally has never visited any of our checkpoints. So, uh, you know, it, I just kind of find uh, the stories that I hear that's being spread about the checkpoints, they're, uh, they're pretty much false. And uh, I, I just can't... Uh, understand why anybody's trying to stop us from saving lives. I mean, it's, it's just kind of unreal. And it seems to me that you need to take this action because like I'm seeing with Navajo Nation and other tribes, it's not like the state government is providing so much relief <laughs> to uh, uh, Native Americans. I'm hearing horror stories of, you know, not, not a ton of ventilators, uh, not, a, not, you know, running out of... Um, not a lot of, not enough uh, PPE. So, what has Governor Nome uh, provided for Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe? Uh, right now, uh, the state of South Dakota has not provided us pretty much with nothing. Um, you know, and, and uh, prior to uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, we're uh, here with our our service unit, our hospital, with the eight bed uh, facility. Uh, we have six ventilators. Uh, prior to this pandemic, uh, we had no phys uh, respiratory therapist, but uh, since then we have uh, was successful in, in hiring a respiratory therapist. And the thing about what I've been told is that on an average, uh, usually a respiratory therapist is uh, uh, monitors two to three uh, ventilators, four at most. So uh, considering we only have one uh, qualified individual, uh, basically, we only have four ventilators, and, and, and that's a huge concern for us because um, the nearest uh, critical county is in Rapid City, which is a minimum of a three-hour drive. So uh, this is a big issue for us. Uh, the potential is there to really harm our people and the residents of this reservation. And like I've been saying uh, on a daily basis, one just has to look at uh, what's going on in Navajo. I mean, that could easily be us because uh, we share the same uh, over uh, overcrowded housing, no housing, uh, overcrowded, high poverty, poor health. Uh, everything that's happening there could easily be 
happening to a Sioux uh, reservation up here in the Dakota. So uh, we, we see that, we realize that. So we're just doing everything we can to uh, take uh, any preventive uh, measures possible. And, and that is to monitor who comes and goes through our labs. And like you said, I mean, there's pre-existing conditions uh, like diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer rates, not to mention all the environmental toxicity from the pipelines and the mining and many other things that are going on on reservations uh, at your expense. So uh, you don't really have much wiggle room uh, because all it takes is uh, somebody from outside coming in, like you said, uh, and infecting you know, a couple people and it could spread like wildfire through, through your tribe. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, in many uh, average homes here on the reservation, there's probably 10 to 18 to 20 people in, in every home at, at uh, any given night. So it, it is uh, the potential there to uh, really harm us. So, uh, you know, we're just doing every uh, thing we can because right now we realize that the uh, best weapon we have at this time is prevention. And, and that's why we put up these checkpoints and that's why we will uh, continue to operate them to uh, try to keep uh, the virus away and, and and if it does come, we'll be able to uh, track it when, uh, and so forth. And is the governor threatening some type of uh, force that if you don't agree to take down the checkpoints, they will come in and basically force you to? Well, it's kind of interesting. You know, the letter was uh, out on the media when we received it. Uh, so we don't, and, and they gave us a time frame of 48 hours. So we're not sure when that is. Uh, and the other thing was uh, threatened with uh, some type of legal action. And so we're just kind of uh, a little uh, curious what that all means, because uh, in earlier years, there has been uh, uh, cases that have been uh, uh, settled that uh, said uh, that the state has no jurisdiction on our, on our land. Um, at one point, uh, she has a brief, there's a briefing out there, and in that briefing, uh, she tells the reporters that the state of South Dakota has no jurisdiction on a reservation. So, uh, just kind of curious and uh, dumbfounded on, on what could happen for us doing this. I mean, it's just kind of unreal. I mean, uh, you know, we look around and, and we see the number of uh, positive cases climbing, increasing in South Dakota, and also, then, sadly, the number of deaths. And, and we should be worrying about that and, and working and focusing on, on trying to keep that at a minimum. But instead, we're we're here uh, trying to deal with some uh, because some travelers are a little uh, upset because they uh, slow down for uh, maybe a minute or two of their day. And it's just, uh, it just isn't right. And what I find so cr crazy is, you know, based on my reporting at Standing Rock where I met you and, and just researching this, uh, I mean, you have a treaty, you know, the treaty of Fort, the Fort Laramie Treaty in uh, 1868, I believe it was. This is your this is your land. So uh, obviously the United States doesn't have a great track record of honoring these treaties. But I look at it as, you know, who is she to tell you what to do uh, with checkpoints if you have a treaty that is supposed to be the law of the land that says this is your uh, land and property? Yeah, that, that's why, again, you know, I just want to say why we're kind of curious on what uh, what the state of South Dakota means, that they're going to take some type of legal action. So we're like, well, what is that? You know, well, but I, I just going to uh, tell our people that no matter uh, that's up to them, uh, we're going to stay belligerent uh, and, and just maintaining our course of action we're doing because uh, uh, it, it's working. I, I believe we have only uh, one positive case. We were uh, uh, able to track it. We got it contained. And, uh, the patients are doing well, uh, looking for a full recovery. So we, we're thankful for that. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, by us continuing the things we're doing, that we'll be able to uh, keep it at a very minimum and hopefully uh, keep it off our, off our land. But, you know, it's just a matter of time before it comes, but we're going to do our best to keep it away as long as we can. And uh, let me ask you, because obviously Navajo Nation has had more cases, but with the um, people sheltering in place, 
Uh, it's not like you guys have amazing internet connectivity out there for Zoom learning. Um, there are limitations to, uh, you know, the, the nearest supermarkets um, and things that we take for granted out, uh, out on the East Coast or the West Coast uh, in, uh, on the reservation. What are some of the challenges you're dealing with being that people have to stay at home? Uh, what are you guys, uh, what is the biggest obstacles? You know, right now, uh, you kind of hit the nail on the head. It, it is food. Uh, it supplies. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I'm just trying to think, probably three uh, grocery stores on our reservation. Our reservation is uh, 3.2 million acres. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been a, a big challenge to keep our shelf stocked. Um, you know, and I know uh, the grocery owners are... are uh, our, our tribal grocery store, they've been working really hard and, and, and finding more suppliers, different suppliers, just to keep the food and, and the supplies coming in. So it, it has been a big challenge, um, you know, and, and and as we watch every day and looking at the numbers, uh, more and more uh, counties in South Dakota are, are getting more effect, infected and, and they're growing to be what they're uh, deeming them community spread where they don't know where the virus is at in my county. So, you know, it, it is pretty alarming. It, it, it is, we're going through, a, you know, it, it, it's a lot harder to get the products that we normally do because, uh, you know, a lot of our uh, our residents here do not travel to and leave the reservation. So that's been probably one of the biggest challenges is bringing in supplies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, at the checkpoint, are you checking people's temperatures? What what what's being done uh, at the checkpoints? Well, there's just a lot of uh, health questions. Uh, you know, first they ask where you're going or, or where you're coming from. Uh, do you uh, how do you feel? Do you have a fever? Do you uh, uh, have you been exposed to anybody with uh, you know uh, COVID nineteen? Just a couple questions uh, dealing with health and. and and so it, it probably takes about around a minute, mm -hmm. a little more, a little less to uh, stop and, and fill out the questionnaire. But uh, as a motorist, you're not uh, filling it out. It's uh, uh, checkpoint deputies that are uh, getting your information and, putting it, and filling it out for you. And um, you said you have six ventilators. How many people do you have living on the reservation right now for the amount of ventilators? You know, we, we there's about 12,000 uh, residents of this reservation. Um, we, we started looking at, you know, in prior, prior uh, maybe a couple months ago when we looked, we have 12,000 residents. If half get it, that leaves 6,000. And they were telling us that 80% of the people can, um, can uh, um, be uh, at home. So that leaves 20%. So when you look at uh, what's left over, uh, you know, it, it was around 1,200 beds that we would need. And we're looking like 1,200 beds, and we only have eight. And then we started looking out, you know, further out to Rapid City, and they don't have that very many beds either. So uh, that kind of prompted us to really, really look and, and really start taking uh, a lot of these preventive measures. So uh, so if we do get at the point that we, we don't need a requirement of 1,200 beds. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the... The original coronavirus package, eight billion, was carved out for Native American tribes. But from what, from reporting that's been out there, virtually nothing has actually gotten to tribes. Have you gotten any federal help? You know, you know, as of right now, we have not received any of the uh, funding from the eight billion. Uh, we we were a party. We were a plaintiff. We we sued the treasury. We wanted the tribes uh, because of uh, trying to give a. Uh, nearly half of that money to Alaska uh, uh, business corporations that are chartered under state. We felt that uh, only federally recognized uh, tribes should be eligible for money because we provide direct services to to our people. And we know that uh, the Alaska villages themselves they they deserve this money. We agree with it, but not these corporations. And uh, as of today. Uh, a lot of tribes, uh, I know the tribes in North Dakota, and, and now we're starting to get information. Some of the other South Dakota tribes have been uh, contacted and, and informed how much money they're getting from this uh, 
set aside, but as of today, our tribe has not ever been contacted. So we're still sitting here kind of wondering. So <laughs> I don't know if it's because we they're penalizing us for standing up. I don't know this. I, I hope not. But uh, as of right now, we haven't got nothing out of the $8 billion set aside. And uh, obviously, Keystone, uh, the Keystone XL pipeline, which it's hard to keep up with. There's been so many times a judge knocks it down and then it gets reversed. Um, what's the status right now? Because my fear is during a global pandemic, Trans Canada or whatever they're calling themselves now will, as everyone's distracted, uh, try to do construction and all that, even if a judge has uh, told them they can't. Yeah, as of right now, one good thing that we really we really were happy about was that where they took back all the water permits. So we we're really glad about that, and and because that's one of our biggest concerns, because they are planning to uh, cross the Cheyenne River, and uh, so right now we're pretty happy about that. But we're finally kind of been watching it too, because we realized that in the past that they have been, uh, you know, they don't have the authority, the legal authority to. Uh, do construction they have been doing a little bits and pieces here and there so so we're kind of keeping an eye on them and uh, we are concerned and, and hopefully that they don't go into full uh, construction because that will be definitely a, a pretty good challenge for us how to deal with that and and, and as well as trying to uh, deal with this uh, uh, virus mm -hmm. and uh, you know speaking with someone from Navajo Nation one of the challenges uh, you know, life uh, in the tribe is a uh, huge part of it is your social, the social aspect as well as the spiritual aspect. Uh, ha has tribe members found it kind of difficult being that such a large uh, portion of life is being social and spiritual activities? Yeah, you know, um, that was something that uh, is a big issue for us as well. Uh, you know, our white buffalo, uh, white buffalo calf uh, pipe keeper, you know, he, he made the announcement that, you know, we shouldn't have any sun dances and stuff. So that has been a, a pretty much a big uh, let down to a lot of our members and a lot of our people who, who do pray uh, during the sun dance. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, uh, kind of hindered us in a lot of the, the, the things and the ceremonies that we normally do throughout the summer and so forth. So. I just kind of can't wait till this goes away. <laughs> yeah. And uh, lastly, how can my viewers help? Is there somewhere that food could be sent or other um, equipment? Well, you know, we uh, we do have a website. I, I guess, you know, it's just whatever, you know, and then I guess more or less just uh, appreciate it. People could uh, send prayers our way and, and to uh, stand with us the best they can. I guess with that, all that would be great. All right. Thank you, Harold Frazier, the chairman of Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Uh, we'll stay in touch, and uh, hopefully these numbers stay down like they have. Yep. Thank you. Take care. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.